Hey there, Stephanie. This video is uh, deterred, is uh, supposed to, intended to uh, help you make a little bit of sense out of my notes on your job description and to give you a better understanding of what I was looking for in some areas where uh, you could do a little bit of reworking. Um, if you haven't already done so, please go and uh, reference the two files that are attached to the comments section of the, your assignment grading. Uh, one of them is the doc file that I have taken from you with your job description, made some changes to it in terms of some some uh, formatting and some wording, uh, some aesthetic kinds of things. Um, get rid of the one that you sent me and use this one from now on because uh, I, I hate to have to go back and backtrack over some things that I've done to, to, to maybe pretty up a little bit what you gave me. Uh, so when you make some corrections to it, make corrections to the one that I've attached in the class to the Dropbox and then send that back to me by email when you're done. <clears throat> also you'll want to print out the PDF file that has all of my scribblings that I'm going to be referring to on this video so you can kind of look at what I'm talking about and see the notes for um, reference as you go back later and make some changes to it. <clears throat> and first of all let me say that you did, re did very well on this. Um, you understood the, the concepts, uh, just missed a little bit here and there in terms of sp some specifics, um, and hopefully this video will help you to, to put it all into perspective and finish out the project so that we can move forward with getting folks from communications to uh, update your uh, or apply for your job. And let me say first of all that um, what you've got here in terms of the format of this job description is probably a little different than what you'll see in real life. A lot of job descriptions that you see in HR don't have the job context. Uh, it's really focused more on, on what the job is supposed to do rather than what the person who's doing the job is supposed to, to have as they come into the job. But I wanted you to do them both in this assignment to force you to think from HR in terms of what does this job do and what's the environment that this job is done in so that you understand the job and the complexities of it. And when you get ready to interview, knowing the context of the job will help you better interview the candidates and answer their questions. So let's start off the job summary. You did a real good job of that. The purpose of that is an, an executive summary kind of thing where the candidate can look at a few sentences and get an idea for what this job involves and they can decide whether to keep reading or not. If they read the job summary and it says, I, you know, I'm not really interested in this, they don't even look at the rest of the job description. Um, but you've saved them the time if they do. You did a good job on that. It is supposed to pull out the, the, the very high level highlights of the, uh, the essential functions and I think that you did that. In the essential functions, uh, on the file that I sent back to you, I cleaned it up a little bit. I made it a little bit more parallel. I added some language at the top that I didn't have in my example that didn't affect your grade that I thought was good and that I'm going to start using in the future in terms of us providing reasonable accommodation. Um, then what I did was just some aesthetic things, putting periods at the end and eliminating the S so that it uh, structures a little bit better. Um, I would, as you look back over this, uh, over the job summary and the essential functions, even though you might not need big changes, read over them one more time with a fresh perspective, thinking about it from the perspective not of the HR person about to interview candidates, but from the candidate to see if you learn enough about this job to make a decision on interviewing. In the essential functions, the one thing that I would point you to uh, out, in the, out in the margin, you may not be able to read it, uh, I wrote warehouse question mark, and that is because we do have a job called warehouse clerk, uh, and most of our packages that are coming in from FedEx or going out FedEx or whatnot would probably go through the warehouse. So that might not be an option in the receptionist's um, job description unless you envision that the UPS guy is going to come in through the front door instead of going around to the back to the warehouse. Uh, but if so, uh, let's, let's really clarify uh, what the role is of the receptionist. Okay, but you've got the main things in terms of the big picture of greeting the public, directing them, serving as the point of contact for the rest of the organization. I've also added the standard other duties uh, to the bottom of that. You did well on that. In the job context, each one of those pieces is designed to answer a specific question that a new employee or a prospective employee might have. A, supervision received, answers the question, who do I report to? What is the chain of command here? And the perspective from the from the candidate is, if I look at a, uh, an org chart for this organization, I can find my box as the receptionist. Who's in the box above me by title, not by name? So what you're doing here is, is good in the sense that you've said uh, you 
you are under the supervision of the office manager. You might clarify at this point whether that office manager is on site down the hall or whether the office manager is in another building somewhere. You do say that if they're not on the premises, again, are they normally? Is this the exception if they're not? Uh, indicate whether they are on campus or somewhere else. And then you've got a pretty good thing there that you can reach them even if they're not here. That was pretty good. Available guidelines answers the question, I don't want to bother my boss all the time for every stupid little question. What other resources do I have to answer my questions? So the available guidelines look at this from the perspective of what resources are there that we've created that you have at your fingertips so that you don't have to go track somebody down every time you have a question. Typically, the things that you would talk about in this short section of, of two or three sentences re reference things like employee handbooks and policies manuals and procedures manuals, um, company intranets where there are links to different things, uh, maybe outside websites that we reference an awful lot. Um, but you want to be able to summarize in, a, in just a few sentences here uh, all of the different kinds of things that we have available for the receptionist. Um, they're uh, certainly a big part of the receptionist is answering the phone on what might be a very complicated phone system. So there may be a manual about how, how to work the phone system. And you want to reference that in here. The guidelines are those things, that tools that we have to answer questions so that you don't have to bug the boss. Rewrite that section with that in mind. Okay. Uh, accountability consequence of error. Uh, I put more because I wanted you to elaborate a little bit. The biggest things, again, that the receptionist will do is to direct traffic, to greet people, to, to put them in contact with folks that they need to get in contact with, answer the phone, create a good first image, those kinds of things. So what might somebody who's not in the right position, the, the receptionist that we hire that really doesn't need to be the receptionist, what are some of the things that could go wrong? Um, the, the things that we're going to hold you accountable for is the receptionist is answering the phone correctly, politely, uh, promptly, directing the traffic accurately, those kinds of things. And in terms of consequence, what happens if you don't do that well? Um, if you make people wait too long, they get frustrated. If you send them to the wrong people, not just the customers, but the employees are frustrated as well. So, uh, you know, what are the what are the consequences? You know, not doing this job well could result in our company having a bad image. Uh, or uh, delays in processing or things like that. Um, if you have a bad attitude, we might have to reassign you or terminate your position or whatever. That's the, what I mean by accountability and consequence of error. Personal context answers the question, who am I going to interact with on, uh, on any kind of basis and how frequently will I do that? You talk about visitors, you talk about the office manager, but certainly you're going to interact with other people in the company. Uh, you might interact with vendors or all kinds of different things like that. So I want you in this particular section to brainstorm all of the different categories of people, and there may be four or five that you would interact with as the receptionist, and then I want you to try to define how frequently you're going to do that. If you're going to meetings, maybe they're once a week or once a month, but you're going to interact with these people in this meeting. You're going to have to give updates to this person you know, once a month or twice a year. Um, the, the customers, the visitors are, are daily or hourly or whatever. Um, office manager, daily basis, but be a little bit more specific in terms of frequency and expanding a little bit the kinds of people, their roles. Supervision exercised. You are on track with this. That answers the question, am I in charge of anybody else? And in most of the cases for the jobs that we have in this class, the answer is no. They're entry-level positions. So you, you would certainly say you won't have the opportunity to supervise other employees, but think bigger picture, longer term. You might have a statement that says as you grow in the position, uh, you might be called upon to help train a new employee, or we might have as a regular uh, process that all new employees spend some time with you learning the phone system or learning about, you know, about this, that, or the other. So in a sense, you might be informally supervising people for short periods of time, although it's not an official part of your job. That's what you want to get at here. Under physical demands, as it would suggest, this answers the question, what have I got to be able to do physically to do this job? Do I have to lift things? Do I have to stare at a computer screen? Do I have to concentrate? Um, <clears throat> do I have to... Um, stay on my feet a lot? Do I do a lot of walking? Uh, you've done a pretty good job here indicating the sitting at the desk, the computers, the phones, the photography, uh, fax machine stuff, um, filing, lifting up to 20-pound boxes. Um, you, you've done a real good job here. 
just like with the summary, go back and reread it. Think about it from the candidate's perspective. See if there's anything else that you've left out that might make it easier on them. Under work hazards, certainly we're going to be subjected to the OSHA standards. That's a that's a that's a necessary expectation from the government. But go a little deeper. Um, I would. I would, I would add a little bit more. The, the work hazards, you certainly would want to talk about the receptionist being a, potentially a very busy job in terms of the phone. It could be stressful trying to keep up with the phone and talk to everybody in a short amount of time. Get them on the phone, uh, deal with their issue, route them appropriately. So that, that could be a hazard that it can be stressful at times dealing with the flow of the phone and being interrupted by guests and things like that. Uh, also, in terms of hazards, maybe there is um, some sort of, of hazards related to a strain on your eyes from looking at the computer screens and things like that. Uh, you would certainly say that um, there are no substantial hazards, but there are minimal things that could cause issues, and here's what some of them are, okay? Personal demands ask the questions, how does this job impact everything outside of here, like my family, my relationships, my time, that sort of thing. So uh, I want you to rewrite that section to, to address whether this is, um, you know, just weekdays, if there's any overtime, if there's any holiday, if there's any weekends, um, the nighttime work, any of that kind of stuff. And it's okay if it's not, you just want to specify that. But if there is overtime expected or weekends expected, you want to spell that out here because certainly that could make the difference in whether I take this job or not. Uh, if I'm looking for a Monday to Friday, nine to five, and you tell me I've got to work weekends, I might say, no, thank you. And not knowing that might waste both of our time. Uh, also in terms of personal demands, is there any travel? Normally the receptionist would not, but maybe we need them to go to the other sites from time to time or go a meeting here or there. Uh, if there's occasionally travel, you'd say there might be some, some occasional travel, but it's typically just during the day, you're home back again at night, you travel by car, those kinds of things. All right, overall pretty good there. Knowledge, skills, abilities, think back to your essential functions. What knowledge do you have to have to do this? Uh, what abilities do you have to have? You certainly need the ability to learn a complex phone system pretty quickly. You have to have the skill of balancing uh, competing demands and uh, keeping your calm in the middle of turmoil, those kinds of things need to need to fit in there. Uh, you've got a couple of things that are a little vague, the ability to work with others and to respect coworkers, that, that would be expected of just about anybody, so be a little more specific there. In terms of the minimum qualifications, position requires at least a high school diploma or GED, that's great, that is perfect in terms of the target for this particular project, certainly for a receptionist in the real world. Experience, not necessary. Uh, but computer skills are recommended. You've done that pretty well also. Um, I've added a little bit at the bottom uh, in terms of, um, I forget what the phrasing is, but the, the drug testing or the background checks or, or whatever, uh, and then reworded from Perry Grimes Enterprises to a Marimar, which is what the company is that we're using now. Um, at any rate, hope that that helps you to understand the notes that I put on the, uh, the document that you sent me that I returned in the PDF file. And that it all kind of makes sense now that to help you understand why I'm asking you to do all this stuff. I think there's a lot of value in it once you understand the big picture. It's going to make your interviewing a whole lot easier. If you have questions after watching this video, shoot me an email, give me a call, whatever. Let's make sure that you understand it. And then go to that document that I've attached here with the revisions to your job description and go in and make your changes and email me that file, if at all possible, uh, by Thursday around early mid-afternoon, certainly by Thursday night, because I need to get them loaded on Friday if possible. Uh, I was impressed with what you did. I'm, I'm uh, pleased with your uh, understanding of what we're trying to do, and I hope that's making sense. Thanks.